Uh, thanks all for coming. I'm going to be talking today about Earth Search. Uh, now, how many of you know what Earth Search is or have used it? Okay, so so some of you. Um, so AWS has a public data set program. It's great. They will put all sorts of data online and make it available free to use. Sometimes it's in a requester pays bucket, which means that you have to pay for the egress costs for that. Uh, but there's a wide variety of data that's available through the program. Some of that data is geospatial in nature. Some of it is remote sensing data. And uh, the way that they make it available, however, is that it's just put in a bucket. And so if you have a really large data set, like let's say for Sentinel-2, now this was an animated GIF, and that's clearly not going to work because it's a PDF. Uh, but this is just really going to show you uh, that the bucket, it's just a listing of files that are organized by the grid tile that the files are in. And so you have to know what tiles you are interested in and then go and fetch them. Now the problem with that is that some of the data doesn't fold a complete frame. And so your AOI of interest might be, let's say, in the right hand of the tile here, and you go and you download a bunch of data and there's any waste of your time because it's all no data pixels. So it's a great amount of data. It's hard to use because of that. So a few years ago, we started uh, an API called Earth Search, and we deployed this in 2019, and we indexed all of the Sentinel-2 data. At the same time, we were working with Geoscience Australia and Digital Earth Africa to create COG versions of the Sentinel-2 data. The Sentinel-2 data is originally in a JPEG 2000 format, which is not very cloud friendly. Uh, and so there was interest in uh, COGS for Africa. We COGified all of Africa for the entire archive. And after that, Amazon agreed to pay for the storage costs to do this globally. And so we continued and processed the entire archive. The Earth Search endpoint is an index of both the JPEG 2000 files and the COGS, they're in separate collections. You can see there's three collections in that endpoint. There's the level 2A, there's the level 1C, uh, and then the level 2A COGS. Now, back in May, uh, some of you might have noticed because we started getting emails that the endpoint would stop being updated. Uh, and it turned out that our Elasticsearch cluster was full and I didn't notice it right away. It's important to understand that this is a best effort. Uh, we don't get paid for this. We make this service publicly available for free as a, as a public good. Uh, Amazon pays for the storage costs uh, and the compute uh, for, for running this API, uh, but all of the labor is just something that we absorb. And it gets used quite a bit. 60,000 hits a day or more. Sometimes it's millions of hits a day as somebody will come and crawl the entire catalog. EarthSearch has proven to be a, a great resource in terms of a good example, a freely public example of a Stack API. Uh, and when we launched it, we made this available with, it, it wasn't the final version of Stack yet, it was the beta 2 version. So, um, so that's EarthSearch Open is what we call it. Now, we had toyed with the idea at one point about making a pay for service. And so you might actually see this still up on our website, this Earth Search Pro, uh, and, but we're not actually doing that now. We decided that we are just not a product company. We're not structured as a product company. Uh, and so rest assured that there's no plans for us to try and monetize this endpoint. That is not the plan right now. This is gonna be a public endpoint for as long as AWS agrees for it. So I can't promise anything about the future of it, uh, but that's our plan going forward. And it's still though a best effort. Now, if you find yourself using this endpoint quite a bit and you use it in production, the best thing for you to do is probably to mirror the metadata, not the data itself, and stand up your own internal endpoint that you can use. Uh, if this is something that you're interested in, we can help you do that. Just come to me and you can talk to me about that. Um, that way you're not relying on it because at some point in the future, we might have to rate limit this, this endpoint. Um, uh, so again, no promises. Anyway. So I've established now that version zero of this endpoint is no longer being updated. Uh, before that though, we weren't too concerned about this because we had already stood up a version one of the endpoint and we just hadn't widely publicized it yet because we were still populating some data sets in it. So this blog post just came out uh, at the beginning of the month to officially announce the new endpoint. 
Uh, we stood up a separate endpoint here because uh, we needed to re-index all the data. We needed to recreate all the stack metadata. Uh, it was a new version of stack. There was a variety of issues that we wanted to fix. And we also wanted to extend the data sets as well. So whereas before we just had Sentinel-2, now in the version zero endpoint, we still have Sentinel-2, except we've combined, rather than having separate collections for the COGS and the JPEG 2000 files, those are actually just in one collection. And we'll get to that in a minute. We've also indexed the USGS Landsat data, NAEP, which is uh, just for uh, continental US uh, and, and Hawaii, uh, that's high resolution imagery. The Sentinel-1 GRD data, uh, and the Copernicus DEM data. So these are now all indexed within EarthSearch. And I'll go through each of them. So the Copernicus DEM data uh, is, those are COGS. It's in EU Central 1, uh, as far as the region goes. And it's not a request or pays bucket. Um, there's really not a ton of scenes. We don't have these, the DEMs aren't varying over time. So it's one, one set. So it's really not a, a huge uh, data set. The Landsat data, now the important thing to keep in mind about the Landsat data, which is pretty cool, is that this is actually the authoritative source of Landsat data. Uh, and the same cannot be said for the other ones because those various data sets have been mirrored and copied from the source such as ESA. But USGS publishes the Landsat data directly on AWS. And so when you're looking at this endpoint and accessing that data, that's actually the original data from USGS. It is a requester pays bucket if you access it through the S3 URL. Uh, however, Landsat, uh, USGS does make it available through, uh, there's an HTTP URL that's actually not in this, there's another stack API that you can hit uh, from USGS to go through that URL. Um, but it can be a lot slower. Um, so depending on your, on your use case, you really wanna scale up. Uh, I think it's worth using the S3 URL. We've also combined the surface reflectance data and the surface temperature data into one collection, whereas USGS originally had those separated. Uh, the long wave infrared and the optical uh, are collected at the same time. And so if it makes sense to use those together often. Uh, and so we put them into one collection because it's a whole lot easier than having to match up scenes across different selections, uh, different collections. Uh, the NAEP data is, like I said, it's high resolution data. It's in the US West 2 region. It is a requester pays bucket. Uh, Hawaii started being added as part of the program in 2021. Um, you'll see here that this is a aggregation showing where the data is located. Uh, and you'll see that there's this um, area in the, in the Northern United States, that's North Dakota. It, it turns out that uh, the NAEP data is actually collected every three years for most states. It's collected on a per state basis, uh, but North Dakota, it's a big agricultural state and they actually collect the data every year. And so that's why we see a lot more native data right there. The Sentinel-1 data we recently added, uh, that's also available as cloud optimized. GeoTIFFs, it's in US West 2 as well, although actually now I don't think that's true. I think I made a mistake there, it's in Europe. Um, because Synergize actually puts the files there and converts them into COGS. And it is a requester pays bucket as well. Uh, here, it doesn't really come out very well on the screen, I guess, but you see that most of the data in this aggregation, or most of the data is centered around Europe. Sentinel-1 is primarily co collecting data for Europe region. Now, one of the things we had to do for Sentinel-1 is if you look at the footprints in the metadata in Sentinel-1 as you get them from ESA, they, they, can, they might not be very accurate. Here in this, this was an animated GIF, but you can still see um, the, the point here. The, the blue footprint is the footprint that you get from the metadata from Sentinel-1. Now, my, the aforementioned problem, whereas if my AOI uh, is in this no data region, this especially is common around uh, coastlines, then you might get a hit on the scene. So we wanted to create more accurate data. Uh, up here, there's even more difference if you zoom in. Uh, and so there's a blog post that we published recently about uh, some a capability that we added into Stack Tools. So if you are generating Stack yourself for data uh, and you want more accurate footprints, you go ahead and read this blog post. It's a pretty technical dive into update in, into creating footprints for raster data. The Sentinel two data. Um, this is a talked about this before, this is in US West 2, the COGS, 
the JPEG 2000 files are in EU Central 1. Those JPEG 2000 files are a requester pays bucket, uh, but the COGS are not. And um, the JPEG 2000s, uh, if you want to know why, you probably shouldn't hit those in a cloud optimized way. You can talk to Vincent over here uh, about that. Um, but it's great because we have the COGS and those are available for free. It is the entire archive from 2015 to present. Um, the data, uh, just to give you an idea of the data, ESA makes available, Synergize actually takes that data, puts it into EU Central One. As soon as that data gets put into EU Central One, we, uh, we're subscribed to an SNS topic, we get that data, we convert it to a COGS. And so it happens in about three to five hours uh, from when the scene is collected to when it's available as a COG. One of the changes in, from the old endpoint to the new one is in the naming of the assets. So I, I mentioned before the JPEG 2000s and the COGS are all available within the same item. And so if you look off to the right here, you'll see those are listed assets. So there's a lot of assets in every item. You see the JPEG 2000 ones uh, have used the same uh, band names, but they just have the dash JP2 extension on it. So most people are going to be interested in the COGS and those are the regularly named assets. If you look over here, you'll see that uh, just e extending that there, um, red you see points to the TIFF and the blue JP2 is, is pointing to the JPEG 2000 there. Another issue that had come up with Sentinel-2 was back last year when ESA introduced a breaking change in their processing baseline with 4.0, and they introduced a, um, a scale and offset, well, there was already a scale, they introduced an offset to the data, which meant uh, the bottom line was that if you were comparing data from before January 25th of last year and data now, uh, that you would have to apply this offset in order for them to really be comparable. Now, because we were doing the COGS for Geoscience Australia, they requested that we actually apply those offsets ourselves to the data when we converted them to COGS. We were opening up the data anyway, and so that was, that was doable. Uh, and so we did that, um, unfortunately, because it actually kind of created a whole can of worms with the fact that not all of the data has had the offset applied. Uh, and so there is a flag in the data called uh, BOA offset applied, and you have to look at that to know whether or not that point 0.1. Now, in the date, if that point 0.1 has been applied or not. Now, if you look at the data, you'll see we use this raster bands extension, and the offset is listed there. However, if this is true, then that offset is actually zero because it has been applied. If it's false, then you need to apply the offset. The plan going forward is to, well, we're not entirely sure. ESA is processing all of the old data to a new processing baseline, uh, but since we're reliant on the Synergize data to create COGS, if Synergize doesn't update the data, uh, then we're not gonna be converting it to COGS, and so there's some, there's some unknowns around exactly uh, what, what we're gonna do with regard to this. All of the collections in our search endpoint use a standard set of stack extensions, the uh, storage, um, indicates what the bucket is and whether or not it's a request or pays bucket. The processing extension is used to track the version that we, of the software that we use to create the stack metadata. The raster and projection extensions are used to describe the data type and the projection information. And this is important because uh, it's, we, we use it um, for accessing this data with Open Data Cube. I think I have a slide on that. Uh, and the grid extension is used because we use that um, you saw all the aggregation screenshots that I had before. Uh, we use uh, the grid extension for doing aggregations on tiled grids. Oh yeah, I did, ha I did have a slide on here. So Open Data Cube stack or ODC stack uh, is, uh, if you're familiar with Open Data Cube, it was a, it's a ecosystem of tooling that was originally created by Geoscience Australia. Uh, and as part of the Planetary Computer Project, we worked with Microsoft on that as well, uh, and they funded the creation of ODC Stack. And this allows you to, rather than have Open Data Cube hit a database in order to get all the metadata about it, you can actually just hand it a list of stack items uh, and create an X-Array that's backed by Dask. Um, it's a really useful uh, program. 
uh, if you are looking to do um, large scale cloud um, optimized analytics, uh, I highly recommend that you look to it. The Earth Search endpoint is all powered by FilmDrop, uh, and um, that's our open source stack of, of software that, that we use. It's, it's based on, um, it's, it's all open source components. Um, we're even working on open sourcing the Terraform modules for, for deploying it. Uh, I have a talk where I'll briefly mention this again later this afternoon. So what's next here is there's a bunch of existing issues. There's some metadata updates uh, that we need to make. There's some missing data scenes for Sentinel-2. I talked about the scale and offset issue that we need to fix. Uh, Landsat has a particular issue where USGS will sometimes reprocess the data. And what they do is they delete the old data. Uh, and we don't actually remove that. We don't know that it's necessarily been reprocessed. Uh, and so that's something that we're going to have to figure out. We have to remove those orphan scenes. So sometimes you might hit occasionally a Landsat scene and the asset actually points to nothing at all. That asset doesn't exist anymore. Uh, and we're looking at, uh, at ingesting some future data sets. There's no timeline on this. Uh, MODIS is a possibility. The existing public data set for MODIS is not really um, updated much anymore. Uh, there's some issues with it. So we've been talking to AWS. We might actually take that over and, do the, and continue to create COGS for MODIS. It's a really popular data, data set. Uh, and also looking at Sentinel-2 and Sentinel-5. Uh, Lastly, I want to say that we have a mailing list now. So we stood, when we stood this up, we hadn't actually thought about that. Uh, and we had no idea who the users were. And so we have this endpoint, and we had no idea who was using it, and no real way of contacting who was using it. And we realized that that, that was a bit of a problem, because uh, it was just we'd get random emails, uh, people asking, like, oh, this the old endpoint is down. So if you do use it, I highly encourage you to sign up for the mailing list. Uh, if you go to this GitHub page on, uh, under Element 84 for Earth Search, it's where you can file issues or ask questions using that repository. And in the README, there's a link where you can sign up for the mailing list. This, isn't, uh, uh, this is not a marketing mailing list at all. This is uh, updates to the service, new data sets, uh, issues, or if we end up uh, deprecating it and standing up a new endpoint or wh whatever it may be. It's a way for us to get in touch with users to try and minimize the impact on your use of it. And with that, uh, I'm done a little bit early. We've got time for questions, if you have any. Thank you.